Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Michal Brigiden, and this is IT's Live. It's probably my third time here, and uh, today I want to uh, tell you about something that I learned from the last reInvent conference in Vegas. It's a presentation about data perimeters, and uh, I want to show you how uh, two different uh, attackers can extract uh, data from your S3 buckets. And uh, first one, the per the first, uh, first attacker is our malicious insider. It can be any team member from our development team. It can be a QA expert testing your, uh, testing your solution. It can be anyone with internal access. And uh, let's start with uh, some startup. It's an mHelp startup. They have uh, multiple workloads on a single AWS account. And they store sensitive data on a certain type of data, sometimes invoices, sometimes health data. Uh, also, uh, HR department stores some uh, CVs uh, on, on the S3 on, in different bucket. And uh, the company uh, idea was functionality first, security maybe later. Not a very good idea and uh, definitely not a good practice, but uh, let's help them now. Mm, starting point for them. Uh, they have a cloud development team, and the team has admin access uh, on the whole AWS account, uh, no other restrictions. So this means they have full access to S3 buckets and uh, objects. And uh, how to uh, help this company to secure the data? First idea, maybe let's add S3 bucket policy uh, to uh, every single bucket with sensitive data because uh, the, when uh, the team is allowed to access uh, uh, any data on S3 thanks to IAM policy, then uh, we can say on the bucket policy who from these uh, people allowed to access uh, uh, these buckets can access this particular bucket and even object. And uh, we can limit this to a role uh, used by EC2 worker node. And only this EC2 worker node role can access this uh, particular bucket and its contents. But that's not enough because uh, there's a bypass for that. Uh, as an admin, uh, the attacker can uh, use, for example, the SSM to log into EC2 and then using EC2 extract this uh, data from S3. So uh, still not that secure. Then we can go for a bit uh, of a bigger change. Let's separate our environments. First of all, uh, separate prod and non-prod environments, and then uh, change access model. DevOps or the development team uh, can still have uh, admin access on a non-prod environment, but for our production environment, they can get as much as view-only access. So they can see that the object exists, but they cannot see uh, contents of, uh, of that object. And uh, with that uh, big change, uh, we can also use uh, automation server like Jenkins to deploy our resources on both environments because we just uh, limited uh, the access for our team to prod environment, but we still need new functionality. We need new deployment there. So let's use the automation. But there's also a bypass for this kind of restrictions. Because our team, uh, every member of our team is a Jenkins administrator. So uh, they are able to create, uh, create a job, a new job, modify existing job, uh, maybe uh, create a, a malicious script to modify their uh, production uh, role, uh, AM role on AWS to add admin policy to it. And uh, they are back uh, into business uh, with admin access to production account. So uh, maybe there's uh, another uh, another way, another another security measure. Let's implement a service control policy on the organization uh, management uh, account uh, to protect this, uh, these roles uh, on all accounts. Thanks to that, they will not be able to uh, modify them. But they can still uh, use uh, Jenkins to, uh, use, to use the Jenkins session to access the EC2 and still access the data. So our uh, secure pipeline is not that secure if uh, uh, the team uh, has admin access to, uh, to this tool. 
And uh, the, last, uh, the, the last thing here, protect the pipeline. If we have our team that is not able to log into production environment and that is not able to modify, uh, e easily modify the pipeline jobs there, ju they, ju they can just use the job and uh, all pipelines are defined in code, then whoever decides to do something bad or stupid, it will be in, a, in, in the repository. There will be a change in the repository. Everyone can see who did that change and uh, uh, it can be found on code review and uh, prevented from being deployed anywhere. And uh, the team uh, is only allowed to run uh, this uh, jobs on the, on the automation server and not to modify them directly. Then we have the other, uh, the other way of uh, attacking our resources, not the internal one, but the external attacker. And uh, here uh, we have someone who doesn't know what we have, but someone who uh, is determined to get access to our resources. And uh, the second example is a plastic surgery cleaning. And uh, they have uh, S3 uh, buckets uh, that uh, are used to store uh, patients' photos uh, for different, uh, different reasons, different photos. And uh, there's uh, already a simple bucket policy allowing uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, pods to access, uh, access the bucket to extract these uh, photos. And the pods are then processing these images uh, to uh, select best implants for, for the patient. And uh, there's also our uh, attacker. It's um, a security researcher who uh, found uh, misconfigured Kubernetes. Misconfigured in a way that uh, it was deployed in public subnets. Uh, so there is a public API and uh, there is no... Uh, uh, just a security layer on it uh, and the role-based access control is disabled. So anyone can just uh, open the IP of that Kubernetes API and uh, play with it, either using a web browser or a kubectl. And uh, they can, uh, for example, uh, log into that pod using uh, kubectl exec uh, or extract anything from it running any command. The pod uh, has act full access to uh, our S3 buckets with those images. And the uh, attacker was able to log in to that pod and uh, ask for uh, the metadata of, uh, of that uh, session of that role. Uh, he extracted uh, access key, secret key, and the token. And using these credentials uh, from his own machine, he was able to access S3 uh, buckets. So uh, how to protect that? We already have our bucket policy in place saying that uh, only uh, the pod can access uh, the bucket. But uh, as you can see, uh, if we extract the session credentials of the pod, we can still run uh, queries against the S3 from the local machine. So there is a way to limit that. We can uh, use a VPC endpoint and uh, uh, use that VPC endpoint in our infrastructure so that uh, all uh, pods can connect to our S3 buckets using that endpoint uh, only. And uh, only, uh, only this endpoint uh, can, be, uh, can be used to access uh, the contents because we can modify, uh, we, we can mo modify uh, our bucket policy, but uh, let's uh, wait with that uh, later. But hey, we uh, we limited uh, the access, so only only VPC endpoints. So if we extracted uh, these credentials to our local machine, S3 will will deny our uh, our uh, requests. But we don't need to uh, do that uh, from our local machine. We can extract the data onto the pod if we are there already with SSH access. Extract data there, and then uh, create a a new uh, connection to AWS to our our buckets provide additional uh, access key and secret key for our IAM user on a different account, external account, and uh, then uh, stream these uh, files to our bucket. So, uh, how to protect that? 
we can uh, limit uh, this uh, on BPC endpoint resource policy. With uh, correct resource policy, uh, we can say that uh, the uh, connection can be established only uh, between the resources in our network and uh, S3 buckets that uh, are owned by our organization. Thanks to that, there is no way to connect from the pod to S3 bucket uh, from other organization, some external S3 bucket. And uh, it's already, uh, already blocked so no way to stream data outside our organization but uh, the attacker doesn't need to uh, steal the data usually it's just enough to have a proof of access so uh, a print screen of some sensitive data from the pod uh, should be enough to get a bounty so how to protect uh, from that uh, security uh, setup number three, which should be number one, protect the cluster. If you have a cluster uh, in a, a public subnet, move it to private one, uh, add some security groups, uh, secure it, uh, use role-based access control, do whatever you can to have as many security layers as possible. Uh, deploy your uh, resources uh, in subnets that are accessible only by uh, other resources that require them. You don't, you don't have uh, and any customers uh, connecting to Kubernetes API directly, so why it's publicly exposed. And uh, now a few words about this data perimeter. If you have your data and you want to secure the data on S3 uh, the, the most, so uh, first of all, use IAM policies and uh, create policies uh, having a principle of least privilege in mind and decide who can access your S3 buckets. Then on the other side, on the S3 buckets, use bucket uh, policies to decide who from these already allowed by IAM policies can access this specific bucket or uh, resources uh, from uh, this specific bucket. But also you can uh, say that this bucket can be accessed only from uh, uh, this um, VPC endpoint or only from this IP. This is uh, additional security layer because not everyone who is allowed to access it will be allowed to access it uh, using different uh, channels. Only from your network, the request from your network using the VPC endpoint may be allowed to access the bucket. And then uh, if you use VPC endpoints, then you can use policies to uh, limit which buckets on S3 can be accessed. Because S3 is a public service. So uh, if you just have a VPC endpoint, it will connect uh, you to the S3 the private way, but uh, to, you will be able to access any bucket on S3. So you can limit it to uh, allow your internal resources to access only your buckets. And uh, that's all from me uh, on this session. Uh, I hope uh, you'll like it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, now it's a good time. Uh, you can uh, send them uh, here on chat or uh, you can uh, catch me later on LinkedIn or uh, on email.